What's up guys, Dororo here, the patch just hit, and I'm gonna get this fucking beta key, or I'm gonna die trying. Come on, can't be here all day. <laughs> I haven't even been here for five minutes. I don't get a beta key for failing an event. RNG Jesus, help me. Help me survive this night, day, hour, week, however long this is. We need a montage for this. We're gonna need a Tale of a man tortured himself for seven hours just to end up with nothing. What's up guys, Deroy here and welcome to another episode of Hype Time. What you saw at the start of the video was me a week ago and as you guessed, it was at the exact launch of the beta key event. Looking through it, I couldn't help myself from finding it morbidly entertaining to watch my will to live slowly fade away while I was trying so hard to will myself to keep farming to no avail. And so I have to share this with you guys. The event has been running for a week now and so a lot of people have spent a lot of time farming something they possibly didn't even enjoy to have a shot at a beta key. And thanks to Snow Melody on Reddit who created several polls so we can see the extent of the horror some people went through. Now before I continue along this subject, there's one thing I have to mention and I cannot stress this enough. This is ArenaNet's beta event. It's up to them to decide who gets in and who doesn't. They decide to have a few dedicated and or lucky players have a shot at getting into this beta. That's their choice. And so we should quickly abandon any sense of entitlement that any of us might feel towards getting this actual prize, no matter how much time you actually put into it. It's a lottery after all, you're not guaranteed anything, your chances only marginally increase for each coupon you decide to buy or the longer you decide to play, but it's still the same statistical chance that everyone has every time a bonus chest pops. And again, the chance of you dying on your way to get the lottery ticket is greater than the chance of you actually winning the lottery. Fun fact. That said, the system that surrounds this entire event does, on a large yet compressed scale, reveal some of the major design flaws that ArenaNet cannot or will not change. Many people have gotten used to just shrugging stuff like this off with me. It's just a stupid RNG. I mean, we certainly had to get used to it during season one of The Living Story. At the time, it just wasn't exactly as condensed and punishing as we've seen with this week-long event. The thing is, the problem is not just the random number generator that exists to vary between items on a loot table in order to keep the entire game economy in check. No, it extends much further than that, actually. Some of you may be familiar with the concept of a Skinner box, named after the famous behaviorist B.F. Skinner. He believed you could condition volition to change the way people made choices. The reason why I mention him is because what he found laid the foundation for a lot of the design choices in modern games. Well, because it works, but that's not necessarily a good thing. In short, he created a machine, a simple box with a button in it that he would put pigeons in. When the pigeons pecked at the button, the machine would give them food. Quite simple, really, so why was this so revolutionary? Because pecking the button is an active action and not just an automatic reaction to stimuli. It involves making a decision. If the pigeons wanted the food, they had to peck the button. Just like that, he could condition the pigeons to make a specific choice in order to receive positive stimuli. This is called operant conditioning and it works perfectly fine on humans too. Now imagine switching the pigeon out with yourself, switching the button out with that specific event over there and the food out with a beta key. Of course, as with anything in life, there are numerous shiny buttons to peck at at any given time, but if you want that one specific stimuli, you have to keep pecking the right one. Now the thing is, simply rewarding someone every time they do an action isn't necessarily the best way of keeping them continually doing that action. Rather, methods like rewarding someone for repeating an action a random number of times or only give a reward once every so many minutes are usually far more effective at getting someone to repeat that action. I would argue though that introducing large rewards with an intermittent reward schedule into a system like the Skinner box is a recipe for disaster in any game. Because obviously players will feel left out for having done that one thing ArenaNet wants them to do 
a million times over and still receive nothing for their effort. While at the same time, another player pecked at the button once and got the food. As I said at the start of this video, this is still Arena Nets beta key event, and a beta key is a privilege more than anything. With that in mind, the beta key event is not the problem itself. Now I mentioned the beta key farming event in this context because it highlights the extent of the actual problem. Everyone knows that doing these specific events on these specific maps, there's a small chance that you might end up with a beta key. Mix that up with the gambler's fallacy and you find yourself sitting there for a week straight, still with no result, because you're convinced it'll happen in a minute. After all, you've been here for 18 hours straight. The system should reward you about now. Fact is that the intermittent reward schedule, also referred to as the random number generator, doesn't have to eventually give you anything no matter how many hours you put into it, especially not that thing you want so bad. The differently weighted rewards on any loot table are simply determined by a spin of the wheel every time. Your chances don't actually increase, so can we honestly call any of it dedication or is it just plain stupid luck? The beta event aside, the problem is that we've seen this system several times in Guild Wars 2, which is why I cannot complete my treasure hunter and after years of religiously playing Fractals of the Mist, I still don't have that one skin I actually want. That one piece of fuck. Sorry. Now take the same system we've known for a while in, for example, Fractals of the Mist, and compress that feeling of struggle into just a week's worth of farming and whoopsie you have this beta key event. We see this in a lot of games, especially RPGs are just flooded with reward schedules like this not just Guild Wars 2. The problem is that it's a lazy and cheap way to convince someone that they're enjoying your content. Because you're conditioning players to think that the reason why they're putting so many hours into something is because they actually enjoy your content. Fact is, we players start to find alternate reasons for playing a specific piece of content so as to convince ourselves that the time we're putting in here isn't actually wasted even though at the start of it all we couldn't care less about that alternate reason. In essence, all we want is that one specific thing. And the longer we stay inside the box, the more fed up we get, not just with the outcome, but the entire box itself. Because a Skinner box that over time feels unfair due to the intermittent reward schedule, to most people feel more like a torture box in the form of a carrot on a stick you will never reach. Don't worry little buddy, someday you can just buy the full game and it won't matter that you put 80 hours into the silver waste or try top maps that you now loathe with your entire being. Once again, I have to stress the fact that the beta key is a privilege provided by ArenaNet to lucky and or dedicated players. It's not a must have for anyone, however cool it may be. Still, that doesn't change the fact that ArenaNet is still sticking to their intermittent reward schedule that's currently integrated into several places across the game. The thing is, they already have the alternative to this implemented in the game. We see it across all the original dungeons as well as the new maps. Tokens. We even have tokens in Fractals, they're just not connected to the one thing everyone wants from it, those damn weapons. And before you say anything about the idea of something losing its value once it's tied to a secondary acquisition method, I just like to point out that the token price of said valuable item could easily just be a ridiculously high number to counter this argument. I honestly wouldn't mind. A perfectly fair Skinner box design for any video game should not grant you the final reward itself. It should give you the means to accumulate the requirements for said reward over time. Unfortunately, it seems ArenaNet is rather hesitant to implement ridiculous numbers to acquire super rare items. No, no, we of course have to put our time in the hands of R and Jesus. When instead, I slowly could be enjoying seeing the numbers of tokens increase to the point where I'm finally able to acquire said item. Just like I don't want to go to work every day in the hopes that my boss someday would decide that I should have this 100 inch TV while I'm living in a dumpster, I go to work so that one day I can travel the world or get a new graphics card. Progressive accumulation towards any goal is the most mentally stabilizing way to drive most human beings, not gambling with RNGs. I say most because obviously the stimuli from a lucky gamble usually results in a larger boost of endorphins and some people experience this way more than others. I'm just not lucky when it comes to games. So personally I'm in favor of any alternative there is to sheer luck when working towards any goal, be it monetary or time consuming. I really don't care. As long as real progress can be seen or felt, it becomes a lot more healthy 
mentally for gamers around the world. That said, I really hate account bound items acquired through this Skinner box from hell. I'm still looking at you, Fractal Sword, you piece of <laughs> Sorry. Till now, this entire video has been a bit of a bashing at ArenaNet, and for a good reason, I believe, because I honestly thought they were working their way out of this godforsaken hole. Skinnerbox with an intermittent reward system is just bad design. But looking at the future towards Heart of Thorns, have ArenaNet actually learned something from this? So far, we know that each of the upcoming maps that will be introduced with Heart of Thorns will have their own map-specific currency. On top of that, in an earlier episode of Hive Time, I argued that we might even see map wide currency in some of the original maps. Now we already have several tokens from around Tyria that for the most part currently just clutter up our inventory space. So why would we want more? Well first of all a couple of weeks ago when ArenaNet was discussing these skill points it was confirmed that at least some changes were coming to the wallet system. Specifically, all skill points will be converted into a new currency which will be stored in the wallet. If one thing is getting changed for the wallet, what's going to stop ArenaNet from changing even more things and adding perhaps geodes, banded crests, or pristine fractal relics? With an easier method of storing large quantities of these things than carrying 50 stacks around, they can easily add higher price tags. Also, we know that the acquisition of legendary precursor weapons will switch to a much more dependent method through the collection system. I personally hope for dear life that these few indicators mark the end of this torturous system. Give us huge numbers to work towards. Please, I don't care if there's a price tag of a million tokens for a fractal tonic. Just let me have that option. Well, that's enough rant for now, I guess. But tell me guys, how did the Skinner box, I mean, the beta key event treat you? Did you get a beta key? I'd love to hear your experience from this last week's event in the comment section down below. For now, thank you guys for watching. Until next time, I will see you in the mists.